my name is Tom Randall and we're in Fairhead Island at a trad climbing festival meet. So first uh, touching rock was what I did outside and um, it was probably before what you would say was my typical proper first climbing experience and it was with my friend in Bath and we got all the belts from my parents' bedrooms and we wrapped them round our waist and got some car tow rope and started abseiling off the sides of crags with car tow rope and belt buckles and we just threaded the rope through and we thought it was amazing. <laughs> so my proper climbing really started three years later after that and that was through a competition at school and they had a bouldering competition and I did a little bit better than I was expecting to so I thought, oh this sport's cool, I'll do a bit more. I think the moment I started climbing it was a full-on <laughs> love obsession. I still have little route maps that I wrote out for my boulder problems on the back wall of my house when I was 17 and yeah I was fully obsessive right from the start. So I first met Pete at an indoor wall in Sheffield and he was quite obviously a different person. I couldn't find anyone to do this challenge to solo 500 routes in a day and Pete straight away went yeah I'll do it and when you meet people like that you know there's something a bit different and the first times we went climbing he was silly, he wanted to have fun, but he wanted to do hard things. I knew we we're going to be, I knew for sure we we're going to be good friends for a long time. So the most important route for me in my climbing career so far is for sure the Century Crack, because it was the first time I think where I actually kind of believed in myself, because I put a lot of effort into that with Pete and we trained for a long time and we did something that we weren't even sure was possible. And when you do that just once, it's a bit of a light bulb moment. You think, oh, actually, maybe I could do it again. The realisation of that climbing was my career, maybe you could only say it just in the last couple of years, in a way, because it slowly crept up on me and I, I haven't really been aware of it. I, I never made a, a set decision that climbing was going to be my career. It was more like, I'll have a go, I'll do a bit more of this, I'll do a bit more of that. And it's probably like loads of professional climbers where you start working at an indoor wall, you do a bit of route setting, you do some reception work, then you might get a small sponsorship deal and it, it kind of goes from there. So the RAB partnership went from getting a free, free few coats to being more of a part of the family and I got involved with some of their trips and their meets. I got to meet their photographers, I go to the office, see how the kit's made, get to give feedback and I love that because I'm a small business owner. I get to work with another brand, I get to see how they do that process and to be involved with it and give something positive to it is a real privilege. So I'm a professional climber, but I also am a businessman and I think I have a very entrepreneurial spirit and I was brought up in that kind of way. And I run a, a brush accessory company, which is uh, Sublime, and I have a climbing wall in the Midlands. And I have a training company, Lattice Training, and I've started up a new enterprise recently with Pete for making crack climbing volumes. And it does seem quite <laughs> a lot sometimes, but it comes back to this thing that I'm prepared to work really hard. And if I put my effort in and the time and think about it carefully, then I reckon anyone can grow anything. I was very much encouraged by my grandpa and my dad to look at stock trading and finance. Pretty harsh environment in many ways and being battered every day and someone telling you one moment you're a genius the next you're shit. I was eventually successful with my trading and I stayed in the company longer term and I realised that I wasn't as motivated by money as I thought I was. So I met my wife when I was 20, 20 and <clears throat> I saw her at university and I quite often spotted her so she kind of stood out to me straight away and the first time that we met was at a dinner where I uh, hate uh, bassets or bassets all sorts, you know, the licorice things, but I only like the sugary bit on the outside and Kim hates the sugary bit and likes the nasty licorice bit inside. And I sat next to this girl, which was Kim, at the dinner table and I noticed after a while that she was eating my 
chewed like sloppy bits off my plate. <laughs> and I went, this is brilliant. <laughs> and that's kind of like what made me think this girl's really special. <laughs> They have a very good relationship. They kind of go off in their own little world and they have their own little jokes. They look like your big flipper feet. <laughs> Pete now also has the key to the basement, which uh, really has kind of solidified their relationship. Come on. I think every person has to have a really good relationship with their wife as a full-time climber or their partner because it's such a big part of your life. It's a job, it's a lifestyle, it's a hobby, it's everything. And if you don't have that understanding between you, I think it's very hard to manage it long term. I would say my defining characteristic within my climbing is that I feel I have to deserve something. So if something comes too easy and I never have to put that much effort in it, I don't tend to value it very greatly. But if I put an absolute, you know, blood, sweat and tears into something, then I truly feel like I deserved it and I've earned it. I like graft, I like hard work. Probably the suffering for training is maybe learnt off my dad. Uh, I think I, I, I watched my dad do it a lot when I was younger. I remember him being sick at the end of races and, and going out and I did a lot of running when I was younger with him and I really watched him suffer. Same, I watched him train for rugby, he told me a lot of stories about how he was not one of the best but he worked the hardest and that really stayed with me I think. The number one thing that I would say to any young person who wanted to make a career within climbing would be try and connect to as many people as possible within the industry. You might be interested in uh, owning a climbing shop, for example. Don't just talk to climbing shop owners. Go and talk to reps, talk to clothing brands, go and talk to sponsored athletes, the end users. Just get in contact with everyone so that you understand the big picture because it's really hard to make your way in any industry unless you understand all the little parts that go together. And if you see the perspective of everyone, then you can fit in really effectively. So it's about seeing the perspective of everyone else, I think.